Director of Customer Delivery at Affinity Water. Anton, thank you very much indeed for talking to the Affinity Water podcast series in Careers Week 2022. We're going to learn about your career. When did you join Affinity Water and what role and qualifications were involved? Yeah, I joined, it was actually called Three Valleys Water when I joined, and that was back in 2007. I joined as part of uh, what they called the General Business Graduate Scheme, and I just finished uh, uh, studying my degree in business management at Exeter University. So I joined back in 2007 when I was 20, straight from university. And can you remember what it was like? It's quite a while ago now, over 20 years, but coming to interview, were you nervous? Had you revised and stayed up the night before? I definitely revised and stayed up. That's that's definitely me. So it would have been an all-nighter uh, the, the night before. I probably got more worried about what I was going to wear and me, me suit being nice because I, uh, I do like to get myself in a flap and have a few wardrobe changes. I do remember it was an assessment centre as opposed to a sort of standard interview. And the thing that really stuck with me was I'm petrified of wasps. And there was an hour's worth of psychometric testing. And there was a wasp in the room that seemed to have a liking for me and was buzzing around. So I was trying to stay calm and answer the questions, but secretly panicking and getting a flap about this wasp that seemed to take a liking to me. And did you get get the assessment done? I got the assessment done. I did, yeah, I did. I remember driving home and I remember uh, pulling up on the driveway. And as I pulled onto the driveway at home, I actually got the phone call telling me that I'd been successful and and making me a job offer. And it was great because I remember walking into the kitchen and my mum asking me how how it had gone. And I said it it went really well. And when she asked me, sort of, you know, how did I know that? I was able to say because they've they've offered me the job. It it was a great day. And then obviously, uh, you know, a, a really great outcome for me at the end. Well, as they say in modern parlance, boom, you got the job <laughs> with, aff- Absolutely. with Affinity Water. And what roles have you performed since then? And what job are you doing now? You've just been promoted again. I have, yeah. So, so I joined on the graduate scheme. So I was really fortunate to have my first two years with Affinity and actually working across different teams. So I did placements in human resources, um, in, in what was then called public relations, it, it would now be external communications as it is today. I did some time with customer relations, which again would now be our customer experience team. And then after 18 months of being quite business focused, I actually asked to move across to the technical program just because sort of after 18 months I, of working for a water company, I still hadn't seen a, a pipe or any water. So I, I moved across to what was called then program management. It's now called asset delivery. And I was just project managing sort of small capital projects like you know, roadside pumping booster sort of stations. And, and small mains diversions on the below ground side. So that was a, a, a really good time. I then moved into a role after the graduate scheme called client project manager. So actually our project management was done by a, another company called Mace who we'd outsourced to. So my role was to work alongside Mace on the client side, just sort of giving that assurance that, that what, what we were spending our money on was, was getting us the right outcomes. And then when we insourced the project management, I was fortunate enough to uh, get a role as a project manager sort of doing more of the same, but a, a bit more directly involved. I then moved on to be project manager for the Olympic Games or, or Affinity's preparations for the Olympic Games. So we had events like the cycling in our area, we had the rowing, and we also had Wembley Stadium. So there was lots to do to make sure that we were prepared and resilient for anything that might happen or, or uh, sort of you know, impact our reputation if, if things didn't go well during the Olympics. So again, that was a really exciting uh, sort of couple of years and something something quite different. Alongside that, at the same time, I was also getting involved with the Pipeline Industries Guild. I'd worked my way up to be the chairman of the South East branch, and I got to know who was then our operations director at the time, Matt Rowlatt, because he was the national chairman, or going on to be the national chairman of the Pipeline Industries Guild at the same time. And it was one evening, one of the dinners that we used to have, that Matt told me about a role that he had coming up in, in the operations space. So I moved into a regional ops manager role in the southern region looking after all of our customer service technicians and all of our leakage technicians and that's really where I, I fell in love with sort of operations I absolutely loved that I could have me, me shirt and time in the morning sort of being in the boardroom asking for you know asking for more money for, for some funding that we might need and then in the afternoon have my high-vis jacket on and a hard hat being out on site helping the guys you know, doing some of the valve operations or whatever they might be doing so i stayed in operations for for a few years and then i moved into a transformation role so i think everyone got a little bit bored of me talking about what could be better and how things should be done so they asked me to put my money where my mouth is and i moved into a transformation role and and through that time we did a lot of the the design of the new operating model in operations so moving to a regional model and and looking at the terms and conditions and then on conclusion of that project i actually took on 
the overall role of head of community operations, which I did for the last two, three years before being asked to take on this new role, which is director of customer delivery. And that brings together what is all of the community operations teams, so everything below ground, all the pipes, but also all of the production and supply teams. So all the teams that are involved with the abstraction and treatment of the water, as well as our control room, which is our 24-7 sort of hub of the business that, that controls everything we do. And that really is boardroom level director. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. The boardroom has, has certainly become my second home. So yeah, part of Stuart's exec team, uh, it's quite a new exec team that, that he's put together. Um, and obviously, you know, being the director that looks after the water supply of a, of a water company, it's a, it's, it's a really critical role sitting at that top table with the exec team. Yeah, absolutely. Well, congratulations. And I still hope you get time to put that hard hat on and go outside. <laughs> But three quick brain teaser questions for you now, Anton. Go for it. Right, go for it. Tough moments and why? Oh, tough moments. We had a big burst main once down in Egham. It was my first time as a bronze controller where I was offered the graduate programme. We had hundreds of thousands of customers at, at risk of having no water and we didn't have a fitting to fix this burst. So we had to spend £50,000 getting a new fitting sort of bespoke made. And when we flew it down, it, it didn't fit. And I remember having to tell Steve Martin, who was the, the gold director at the time, that, that, that this solution hadn't fixed. So I clearly had the cotton wool on, uh, sort of up to that point and been well looked after. And the cotton wool was running truly off. I, I just got a, what do you mean it doesn't fit? And I just didn't know how else to answer that question. So, yeah, that stands out as, as probably one of the toughest moments in my career during that incident. But you pulled it out, off. We, 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 we got through, yeah, we got through. Well, the next brain teaser, most rewarding? Most rewarding... I met my wife at Affinity Water, actually, so I better give that as my answer, hadn't oh, I? Oh, wow. Um, Vic, Vic was actually, the, there was two of us, there were two business graduates that was on, on the steam, um, so myself and, and Victoria, so Vic and I went on to get to get married, so Affinity and, and sort of the, the water is, is well and truly sort of part of our lives. I think most rewarding, I think seeing different people progress through their careers, whether it be you know, into roles that they've, that they absolutely love and they've sort of always wanted to get, or whether it's sort of up, up the career ladder, we were a really close set of graduates and a number of us have stayed with the business now 15 years later in really good sort of leadership positions across the business. But likewise, I've got technicians who were in my ops team down in when I took on the, the regional manager's role, again, probably, what, 10 years ago, that two have worked their way up the ladder and are now in a really good you know, senior sort of leadership positions. And so I think seeing people progress and sort of realising their potential is always a really rewarding part of being a, of being a manager. And having a wife. And, and having a wife, absolutely. <laughs> third brain teaser. This is a really tough one, Anton. And be honest, the moments that you wouldn't want and don't like to do in your roles, that oh no moment, what are those? Um, oh, that is a tough one. That is a tough one. I would say anything talking about standby. So we, we run our business. The majority of our teams work uh, 8 a.m. till 4 till p.m. or there or thereabouts. But obviously, people need water 24-7. So we run a standby model out of hours. Um, you know, and standby is really tough. It, you know, it's, not, it's not fun. If the phone rings, something's gone wrong. And it can often be sort of a really challenging time. So often we get people wanting to talk about standby, doing something different, uh, maybe not having to do it, etc. And it's always a really emotive subject. But it's also one that's really difficult because, you know, if you do something for someone, it can set a precedent across, you know, customer delivery has got over 450 people, for example, within it. So I always say when it comes to standby, I, I would rather do standby and be on standby than have to talk about it because that inevitably leads to some quite challenging conversations, you know, that are quite difficult for, for all involved. And it also is an emergency situation. So the team pulls together. It can be very rewarding. The team are absolutely fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. It's actually often when we're at our best. So actually when we work, you know, when we break down those silos, we work in true, you know, truly collaboratively sort of across the business because, you know, whatever that incident is, you know, we need to get it resolved. And as I said, I've been here 15 years and, and I'm, you know, I'm yet to come across a time where the team haven't pulled together and, and done a great job to, to resolve whatever incident it is that we're looking at. Yeah, and it is just like being in the emergency services. You've got to keep water running, particularly mothers and babies, hospitals. You've got some very vulnerable customers. But your career in Affinity Water, would you recommend Affinity 
as a career route for others to join? Yeah, a- 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 absolutely. You know, I've been been really blessed throughout my time here. The business will always make great opportunities for you. So if you, know, if you want to come and join Affinity Water, you, know, you want to progress, you want to take on new challenges, you want to learn, you know, there are always those opportunities available. I found it a great company to work for. I've always been really well supported. You know, e- even now in my new role, they want you to succeed as much as you do yourself. So yeah, absolutely. I'd, I'd highly recommend it as a place to work. And just finally, finally, Anton, you're an Affinity Water man, man and boy. God, the man bit I struggle with. I still, I still think of myself as a boy. I'm still a youngster at heart. But yeah, yeah look, I've only worked for Affinity Water. So I joined it straight from university. I've met my wife here. We, we bought our house close to the Ripmansworth office so we could be in and around sort of work. And you know, and we spend our weekends walking around the, the lakes that Affinity own down in the Ripmansworth area. So yeah, absolutely, man and boy, and you know, and long may that continue. Anton Gazard, thank you very much indeed for talking to the Affinity Water podcast series today. I've so enjoyed listening to you. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you.